Hi everyone, today we're going to be t looking at solving second degree trig equations. In the first one, I have 4 sine squared x minus 1 is equal to 0. The way that I'm going to solve a trig equation like this, so if I only have the variable appearing once in my equation, I can just follow my regular steps for solving for a variable. So I'm going to isolate the variable and then use my trig stuff to solve. So if I add 1 over, I'm isolating the variable, I get 4 sine squared x is equal to 1. Divide by 4, I get sine squared x equals 1 over 4. Now, in order to get the squared out of here, I take the square root of both sides. So now I have sine x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 over 4. The square root of 1 over 4 is equal to a half. What angle that I take the sine of gives me plus or minus a half? The reference angle that I'm looking for here is pi over 6. I'm going to draw my little chart to see where sine is positive and negative. But in this example, since I'm looking for when sine of x is equal to positive a half and when sine of x is equal to negative a half, I'm going to have four answers, right? I'm going to have an answer in each of these quadrants. So remember we've said before that the first quadrant gives me my reference angle. And then to figure out my other angles in each of the other three quadrants, I have to figure out the numerator in reference to the denominator. So in the second quadrant, the numerator is minus 1. In the third quadrant, the numerator is plus 1. And in the fourth quadrant, that numerator is times 2 minus 1. So my four values for x in the first quadrant, it's just the reference angle, pi over 6. In the second quadrant, it's minus 1 from the denominator, 5 pi over 6. In the third quadrant, it's plus 1, 7 pi over 6. And in that fourth quadrant, it's times 2 minus 1, so 11 pi over 6. So there's four solutions here in total. Number two, this is different from number one in obvious. This has cosines instead of sines. But I also notice that my variable is appearing twice. One where cosine is being squared and one where cosine is just being left alone. So a lot of times the easiest way to do these is going to be to let cosine x equal a different variable, say y. What we're going to want to do is really factor this, but with the cosines there, sometimes we get a little bit confused. So replacing the cosine x with y's would give me y squared minus 4y plus 3 is equal to 0. Now that makes a lot more sense for me to factor, right? For a problem like this, I'm looking for two numbers that add to negative 4 and multiply to positive 3. So I'm going to have y minus 3 and y minus 1. And now I'm going to substitute the cosine x back in for y. So now I have cosine x minus 3 and cosine x minus 1. Now I can tee this up and solve. So on the left side, I have cosine x is equal to 3, which there's no solution there. I know that cosine x has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. So no solution over here. On the right side, I have cosine x is equal to positive 1. There are two spots where cosine x is equal to positive 1, and that's 0 and 2 pi. Number 3. I'm going to do this the same way that I did number 2, in that I'm going to let sine x equal a different variable. So say I let sine x equal y. I can then say that this equation says 2y squared plus 3y plus 1 is equal to 0. When I factor something with a leading coefficient that's greater than 1, I multiply the number in front of the y squared and the number that doesn't have a variable attached to it. So 2 times 1 is 2. I'm going to be looking for two numbers that add to positive 3 but multiply to positive 2. So that's going to be 2 and 1. What I'm then going to do is split up this middle term into these two factors. So I'm going to write that middle term as 2y plus y. And now I'm going to do factor by grouping. In my first two terms, my GCF is a 2y. I'm left with y plus 1. In my second two terms, the GCF is 1. And I'm left with y plus 1. Factor out the y plus 1. 
and I'm left with 2y plus 1 equal to 0. My next step is to substitute this sine x back in for y. So I have sine x plus 1 and 2 sine x plus 1 equal to 0. On the left side, I have sine x is equal to negative 1. I know that sine is equal to negative 1 at 3 pi over 2. On the right side, if I isolate that variable, I get sine x is equal to negative 1 half. All right, I subtract the 1 over, divide by 2. My reference angle, so where sine of x is equal to a half, that reference angle is pi over 6. Now, in this problem, I'm looking for where sine of x is negative. So I need to cross out the first quadrant and the second quadrant because in those two quadrants, sine is positive. So my two answers for sine x equals negative a half are going to come from the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. In the third quadrant, my numerator is plus 1 from the denominator. And in the fourth quadrant, it's times 2 minus 1. So my two answers over here, plus 1 is going to give me 7 pi over 6. And times 2 minus 1 is going to give me 11 pi over 6. So I have three solutions for x here, 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Number four. For this one, I notice that I have the variable appearing twice, just like it did in 2 and 3. I have a tan cubed x and a tan x. I can't solve this the way I did in number one, where I just follow of order of operations backwards. I'm going to have to solve this one similar to two and three, where I have to do some kind of factoring. Now, before I can factor anything, I always have to get my equation equal to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is just subtract the tan x so that I have three tan cubed x minus tan x is equal to zero. From here, I can see that these two terms have a GCF, and that GCF is tan x. So if I factor out a tan x, I'm left with 3 tan squared x minus 1 equal to 0. I can tee this up and solve. On the left side, I have tan of x is equal to 0. I know that tan x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 pi and 2 pi. On the right side, I'm actually going to write this all out. So I have 3 tan squared x minus 1 is equal to 0. This now looks more like number 1. So I'm just going to solve by isolating the variable. I can add 1 over. I divide by 3. Take the square root. So I have tan x is plus or minus the square root of 1 over 3, which is equal to plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. This doesn't look like any of my exact values, so I'm going to go ahead and rationalize this by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by rad 3 over rad 3. So now I have plus or minus rad 3 over 3. Okay, now that looks like one of my exact values. The reference angle for tan of x equal to rad 3 over 3 is pi over 6. Since I'm plus or minus here, my answers are going to come in all four quadrants. I'm going to have four answers here. So in the first quadrant, it's just the reference angle, pi over 6. And the second quadrant, it's minus 1. Third quadrant, it's plus 1. And then fourth quadrant times 2 minus 1. There are your four solutions for that side. So we really get four, five, six, seven solutions to this equation. Number five. This one is similar to 2 and 3 and that my variable is appearing twice. And since I have a tan squared, I'm going to want to factor this. I'm going to start by letting tan x equal a different variable. I'm going to let tan x equal y. And I'm going to sub in. So I have 3y squared minus 5y minus 2 is equal to 0. Again, when I factor something that has a leading coefficient greater than 1, or really anything other than 1, I multiply my first and my last, so negative 6. I'm looking for two numbers that add to negative 5 but multiply to negative 6. So that's going to be negative 6 and positive 1. I'm going to split up this middle term so that I have negative 6y plus y minus 2. And now I do factor by grouping. My GCF for the first two terms is 3y. I'm left with y minus 2. My second two terms, the GCF is positive 1. 
I'm left with y minus 2. I factor out a y minus 2, and I'm left with 3y plus 1. Sub back in for tan x, I have tan x minus 2 times 3 tan x plus 1 equal to 0. On the left side, I have tan x is equal to positive 2. And now that I'm up to here, I'm noticing that we did not have a domain up here. So we're looking for answers here on 0 to 360. And looking at this, I know that tan x equals 2 is not an exact value that I know. So for this one, I would actually have to use the calculator. And in the calculator, I would type in tan inverse of 2. And I'm just going to round this to the nearest degree. That's going to give me 63 degrees. Since tan is positive, I'm going to have solutions in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. So in the first quadrant, my answer is going to be 63. And in that third quadrant, my answer is going to be 180 plus 63, which gives me 243. Now, on the right side, I have 3 tan x plus 1 is equal to 0. If I subtract the 1 and then divide by 3, I get tan x equals negative 1 over 3. Again, if I use the calculator here, I would do tan inverse of 1 third because this is not an exact value. And I would get x is 18 degrees. If I'm looking for where tan is negative, my solutions are going to be in the second and fourth quadrant. So my answers are going to have to be 180 minus 18, which is 162. And then in the fourth quadrant, 360 minus 18, which gives me 342. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.